we're going to do a brief overview of circles. The equation for a circle comes from Pythagorean theorem. Let's see how that works. Um, if you have a circle on a graph, then any point on that circle on the graph, any point x, y, remember how an x value is always the horizontal distance and the y value is always the vertical distance. Any point on that circle is related to each other by the distance from the center to the outside of the circle. And what do we call that length? R, the radius, right? OK. So then, what do, shape do you notice? I just ended up drawing in my little circle there. What, a right triangle, yes. So we do a right triangle. And what formula do we use for right triangles? Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the legs of the triangle are the distances x and y. And the hypotenuse of the circle is the radius. That is the general equation of a circle, just the standard form for a circle at 0, 0. Now, if it's not at 0, 0, then we have to change it a little bit. So if the center is at some other number, we're just going to call it hk, because that's typically what we use when we move something somewhere, right? Have we talked about that kind of thing before? Not really yet. OK, but you've probably heard this before. So instead of it just being x squared, it's actually going to be x minus h squared because that's how much it would shift the x value over. And actually, rather than it shifting this number here, it's whatever makes the parentheses 0. We'll see that in an example in just a minute. OK, so let's just look at a couple of quick examples. Um, help me graph a couple of equations here. We'll just do that first. If I wanted to graph x squared, sorry, I started getting ahead of myself, plus y squared equals 25, what would that graph look like? Where would the center be located? Zero. Center would be located at 0, 0. What would the radius be? How do we figure that out? The radius would be the square root of 25 because remember how in Pythagorean theorem that number is the radius squared. So if we want to undo the radius squared, we have to go backwards and do the square root of 25, which is 5. So now how do we graph it? I would start by putting a dot at 0, 0 for the center and then just count 5 in each direction for your radius and then connect it into a smooth as circle as possible. I don't expect your pictures to be perfect. Okay, let's try a harder one. Okay, so we talked about if the center of the circle is not at zero, zero, if we want it to be located somewhere else on the graph, then we put these numbers in here that shifts it. But rather than it shifting like left 3 and up 2, like these numbers suggest, it goes the opposite direction because it's whatever number makes the parentheses 0. So what number would make this set of parentheses 0? Positive 3. So this, the center x value is going to be located at positive 3. And then what number would make this set of parentheses 0? A negative 2. Good. And then how do we find the radius? Square root of 4. Good. So square root of 49, I mean, not square root of 4. Square root of 49 would be 7. How come I don't do a plus or minus 7? Because we are talking about the radius of a circle, which is a distance. And we will never have a negative number for that. Okay, so then to graph this, we would go to the right, 3, and down 2, put our center, and then just count 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't expect perfection. And there's 
roughly where our circle is. That one isn't quite as circular, but it's close. Okay, does this sound familiar? Okay, let's do another example. Let's go the opposite direction though. If I give you the center is at negative seven zero and the radius is three, can you write the equation? Try it. Here's our formula. And the center is HK. And of course the radius is represented by the variable R. So tell me the answer. X plus 7 squared plus that's great. We wouldn't just put y minus 0 squared, although you could do that for the first step to make sure you understand that, you know, you're plugging in 0, but then you don't need it there. So plus y squared equals 3 squared, which is 9. Always make sure you square your radius. Don't just leave it as 3 squared. Square it out and get an answer. Okay. The hardest problems you will have to do on your assignment today require you to find the center and radius by completing the square. Find the center and radius by completing the square. We've done a little bit of completing the square, haven't we? Yeah. Okay, so here's an example. x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 2y plus 4 equals 0. This is the equation of a circle in general form. Well, that's the problem we're doing. I don't care if you want to write it. Okay, so that's the equation of a circle in general form. How would you take an equation like this that we just did, which is in standard form, and turn it into something in general form instead? Ooh. How do you think this turns into something like this? If you were to FOIL this part, so you have x squared plus 14x plus 49, and then you don't have to FOIL that. And then if you were to take and move that 9 over here and put squareds first, you would have x squared plus y squared plus 14x plus 40 equals 0. So basically what we're doing is starting with this and then we're going to go backwards to find the answer to graph. 14 came from foiling this out by doing the inside and outside terms um, by doing x plus 7 times x plus 7. We go x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. x times 7 is 7x. And 7 times 7 is 49. Thus, we have our 14x. Okay. So completing the square, the first thing you want to do is group the x's together and then leave a space, and then group the y's together, and leave a space, and then move that 4 to the other side by making it a negative 4 on the opposite side. Okay, why did I leave some spaces in there? So I can complete the square. Okay, so half of negative 6 is negative 3. So that means when we factor this, this is going to be an x minus 3 squared. Well, what is negative 3 squared? Positive 9. But what I add to one side, I have to add to the other side. Now we take the b value on the y squared, so the number that's just next to the y, and we half that. What's half of 2? 1. So in here we would have y plus 1 squared. And what's 1 squared? 1 squared is 1. So if what we add to one side, we have to add to the other side. Okay? 
So that gives us negative 4 plus 9 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So that's a weird answer at the end, but that's okay. Where's the center? Positive 3, negative 1. And what's the radius? The square root of 6, which is approximately 2 point, oh, I meant approximately not congruent, sorry. Approximately 2 point something, I don't know. Because it's bigger than 4 and smaller than 9, right? So the answer is between 2 and 3. Do you see what I did in this step where I took this thing and I factored it as I was going? So that's factored, and this is this part factored, and that is what allows us to find the center and the radius. Okay?